Jnanakosha Vedas Samavedam by pact Jnanakosha a Sastrapedia of Vedic knowledge Upanishads Samaveda based Upanishads Om Ganana Antwa Ganavadigam Havamehe Kavin Kavina Mopotra Vastamam Jetara Jem Brahmanan Brahmanat Patanat Runman Nati Vipida Sadhanam Maha Upanishads Chapter 6 Giving up the deeply felt and seductive glamour consisting in imagination of empirical life you remain what you really are, O sinless one, sportively roam the world. By means of the trenchant and creative thought, I am a non-agent in all contests. There remains but the perception of sameness called supreme immortality. In regard to all elaborations of pain due solely to one sense of agency, finally, there remains but some sameness when one's mental construction dwindle away. This sameness amidst all emotional moods is a status grounded in truth. Anchored in it, the mind is no more reborn. O sage, renouncing all forms of agency and non-agency and abolishing the mind, you remain what you are really. Be steadfast. Steadfast in the final stability, give up the very tendency to renunciation, giving up everything together with its cause, the dichotomy between spirit and mind, light and darkness, the latent impressions and what generates them, as well as the vibrations of vital breath, be you sky-like with a stilled intellect. Having totally wiped out from the heart, the must rose of latent impression. One who remains free from all anxiety is the liberated, is the supreme deity. I have seen all that is worth seeing. Through delusion have I wandered in all the ten directions of space. For the ignorant whom Rome, who roams through reasoning the regions of empirical existence, the latter shrinks into the dimensions of a cow's hoof. In the body with its ins and outs, up and down, in the regions between here and there, there is the self. There is no world that is not the self through and through. There is nothing in which I am not. There is nothing which is not that, through and through. What more do I want? All things are essentially being and spirit pervaded by that. All this is indeed Brahman. All this extended reality is the Self. I am one and this is another. Give up this delusion, O sinless one. The superimposed objects cannot possibly be in the eternal, extended and in undivided Brahman. There is neither sorrow, delusion, old age nor birth. What is here that only that exists always become experiencing things as they occur and are entertaining no desire whatsoever. Neither stunning nor grasping, be always calm, magnanimous one, flawless cognition, swiftly fly to him who finds himself in his last birth just as pure pearls lodge themselves in the best bamboo. This example has been offered to suit best those who develop this passion. The certitude of the joy of cognition, intimate contact of the perceiver and the object, we duly meditate on that stable self, manifest in the truth of oneself, the source of the joy of cognition. G giving up the seed's perception and the object together with latent impressions, we duly meditate on the self that manifests itself first as perception. 
we duly meditate on the eternal self, the illumination of all lights that occupy the middle ground between the is and is not, discarding the Lord who reigns in the heart, those who run after some other God are in fact seeking a gem after casting away the Kausthaba already in their position. As Indra smites mountain peaks with his thunderbolt, so should one strike with the rod of discrimination. These adversaries in the form of sense organs, both active and passive. In the evil dream seen in the night of empirical life, in this empty illusion of the body, everything experienced as the extended delusion of empirical life is impure. In childhood one is stupefied by ignorance, in youth one is vanquished by women. In the period that remains one is worried by one's wife. What can one, the meanest of men, accomplish? But veil as follows, unreality rides on the top of existence, ugliness on the top of things lovely, pains ride on the top of pleasure. What single entity may I resort to? Even those men pass away on the closing and opening of those eyes depends world's disaster or prosperity. Of what account are folk like my humble self? Empirical life is said to be the very limit of suffering. When one's body has slipped into its death, how can pleasure be won? I am awake, I am awake. Here is the wicked thief who has been pestering me. The mind, I shall destroy him. I have long been under his assault. Don't be depressed. Seek not to seize what is fit only to be acute. Giving up ideas of both rejection and seizure, remain rooted in what is neither to be rejected nor seized. Be wholly firm. The knower rid of things to be rejected or seized has without latent impressions, qualities, freedom from desire and fear, coronation and action, eternity, equality, wisdom, gentleness, certitude, steadfastness, amicability, contentment, charity and soft-spokenness. With the sharp needle of penetrating intelligence, tear up the nest cast of the fisher woman of craving in the waters of transmigrating life, a net made of the cords of variegated thoughts, even as a strong wind scatters, net of clouds, then abide in the vast status as immutable Brahman. Cleaving the mind with the mind itself as one does a tree with an axe and attaining the holy status at once be steadfast. Standing or moving, sleeping or walking, dwelling in a place, flying aloft or falling down, inwardly sure that all this is but unreal, a cue all clinging. If you depend on this objective, you have a mind and are in bondage. If you reject the objective, you have no mind, you are liberated. Neither am I, nor is that this real. So thinking remain absolutely immobile in the internals of subjective and objective awareness. Rid of what enjoys and what is enjoyed, set in the middle ground between the object and its enjoyer. Be ever given to the contemplation of the yourself as pure awareness. Dwelling on the taste, be filled with the Supreme Self, resorting to the propolis, Study yourself off and on. Those who are bound by ropes are released. None in the grip of craving may be released by anyone. Therefore, Nigara, shed craving by renouncing all mental constructions. Cutting through this innate and sinful craving, whose essence is egoism with the needle of self-abnegation, be stationed in the border land of the future and the present, entirely quelling all fear whatsoever. Rejecting the inveterate idea, I am the very life of these objects and these objects are my very life. Without these, 
I am nothing and they are nothing without me and reflecting. I do not belong to any object and no object belongs to me. The intellect becomes tranquilized and actions are performed in a sporting spirit. Latent impression of such an agent stand renowned. This renunciation, O Brahman, is extolled as worthy of profound meditation. Due to the equilibrium of the intellect, total obliteration of latent impressions is acquired. That indeed should be deemed the obliteration of latent impressions, having one which one gives up. Even the body as one is free from all sense of possessions. He is called the Jiva Mukta, who lives after giving up all conceivable objects, for he has recreatively given up all latent egoistic impressions. Having given up all baseless constructions and the latent impressions, he who has won tranquility is the best among the knowers of Brahma. He is the liberated, his renunciation may only be deduced. These two fearless ones, unconcerned about pleasures and pains that occur in the due course of time, have achieved the status as Brahman, the passive renouncer and the active yogin, both of whom are self-disciplined and tranquilized. O Lord of Sages, for they neither strive for nor reject anything amidst the inner mental modification. He is called the Jiva Mukta, who lives as one is dreamless sleep, who is neither lifted up nor depressed by the emotions of joy, intolerance, fear, anger, lust and helplessness, and who is free from all objective preoccupations. The craving born of latent impressions oriented towards external objects is said to be bound. The same freed from latent impressions bound up with objects as such is said to be liberated. Know that the desire culminating in the prayerful thought, let this be mine, to be a strong chain that spawns suffering, birth and fear. The magnanimous man renounces this enchanting desire with a uh, with objects both real and unreal and wins the status that is sublime. Then outgrowing the attachment both to bondage and liberation and the state of pain and pleasure, attachment both to the real and unreal remains unshaken like the unagitated ocean. Good sir, man may have a fourfold Certitude. Engendered by the mother and father, I am the body from the foot to the head. This particular certitude, O Brahman, results from the observation of the worries of bondage. Good men have second kind of certitude that promotes liberation. I am beyond all objects and beings. I am subtler than the tip of a hair. Best of Brahmins, a third kind of certitude has been affirmed from a motive of liberation alone. All this objective world, the entire indestructible universe, is but myself. Also, there is a fourth certitude yielding liberation that consists of the assertion, I and the entire world are empty and sky-like at all times. Of these, the first is said to result from the craving that earns bondage. Those having the last three are sportive, extremely pure, and are liberated in this very life. Their cravings have been wholly purified. Great soul sage, the mind seized with the certitude, I am everything, is never born again to taste of sorrow. That Brahman has been identified with emptiness, prakriti, maya, and also consciousness. It has also been said to be Shiva, pure spirit, the Lord, the eternal, and the self. There flourishes but the non-dual power, that is, the Supreme Self, through and through. It sportively builds up the universe with factors born of both duality and non-duality. He who resorts to the status beyond all objects, who is through and through, the spirit that is perfect, who is neither agitated nor complacent, never suffers in this empirical life. 
who performs the actions that fall to his lot, ever viewing foe and friend alike, who is liberated from both likes and dislikes, is neither sad nor hopeful, who utters what pleases all, speaks pleasantly when asked, and who is conversant with the thoughts of all beings, never suffers in this empirical life. Resorting to the primeval vision of reality, marked by the renunciation of all objects and self established fearlessly roam the world as a veritable jiva mukta. Inwardly shedding all cravings, free from attachment, rid of uh, all latent impressions, externally conforming to established patterns of conduct, fearlessly roam the world. Externally stimulating enthusiastic activity, but at heart free from uh, it all, apparently an agent, but really a non-agent room, the world with a purified understanding. Renouncing egoism with an apparent reason, shining like the sky, untarnished roam the world with a purified understanding. Elevated clean of conduct, confirming to established norms of conduct, free from all inner clinging, leading as it were an empirical life. Resorting to the inner spirit of renunciation, apparently he acts to achieve some aim. Only small men discriminate, saying, one is a relative, the other is a stranger. For those who live magnanimously, the entire world constitutes but a family. Resort to the status free from all considerations of empirical life, beyond old age and death, who are all mental constructions, are extinguished and where no attachment finds l lodgment. This is the status of Brahman, absolutely pure, beyond all cravings and sufferings. Equipped thus and roaming, one is not vanquished by cri crisis. By the prop of detachment and excellence like magnanimity, lift up your mind yourself perceivingly in order to enjoy the fruit of Brahmanical freedom. Through detachment it achieves perfection along the path of negation of the object. The mind then is emptied of all cravings as the pure lake is of water, is the season of autumn. Why is not an intelligent man ashamed of clinging to the same dry routine of insufficient actions day after day? Bondage is fashioned by consciousness, and its objects, once free from these liberations, follow. Consciousness, spirit, is never an object of all is self. This is the essence of all Vedantic doctrines. Restoring to this sure doctrine, behold the world intellectually and freely. You will independently achieve the self, the status of bliss holding. I am spirit, these worlds are spirit, the directions are spirit, these manifested beings are spirit. I am the glory maha, devoid of objects and perception, wholly pure of form, eternally manifest, rid of all appearances, see, witness spirit from all of, from all the objects, the full orbit li light in essence, for which no knowables exist, knowledge pure and simple. King of sages, with all mental constructions wiped out, all earnings abolished, resort to the status of certitude and be self-established in the self. The Brahman seeker after truth who dwell upon the Maha Upanishad becomes a well-versed Vedic scholar. Uninitiated, he becomes initiated, he becomes purified by fire, by air, by the sun, by the moon, by truth, by all agents of purification. He becomes known to all gods, is cleaned as if he has dipped in all sacred waters. He dwells in the thoughts of all gods. He has performed all sacrifices. To him accure the fruits of having repeated the Gayatri sixty thousand times, of having repeated Itihasas and Puranas and Sri Rudra a lack of times, of having repeated Omkara ten thousand times. 
he ha hollows the rose of living beings as far as the eye reaches and seven generations both in the past and in the future so declared hiranya garva through repetition of sacred utterances one wins immortality this is the maha maha upanishad om let my limbs and speech prana eyes ears vitality and all the senses grow in strength all existence is the brahma of the upanishad my never deny brahma nor brahma deny me let there be no denial at all let there be no denial at least from me may the virtues that are proclaimed in the upanishad be in me who am i devoted to the atman may they reside in me om let there be peace in me let there be peace in my environment let there be peace in the forces that act on me here ends the maho upanishad included in the samaveda